Okay. Welcome to another Dish Neighbor Watch. I'm Matt. And I'm Pat. Welcome. Special guest this week. I'm Abe. What's up, San Ramon? I'm Brett. Welcome, Brett. Oh, hi. Fine. Great. Buddy. So this week, everybody, it's election season, as we all know. We have Scott Roberts on, and we're proud to have Scott on. Scott is a native of San Ramon and a native of the, or a product alum of the SRVUSD. He's been through all the San Ramon schools. He's been calling San Ramon Valley his home since 1981, graduated from the University of San Francisco, earning a BS in management information systems with a focus in managerial economics. Scott is the founder and president of Fund a Dream, a financial organization dedicated to educating individuals and institutions on college savings and wealth building techniques. Pretty interesting. Providing starting Fund a Dream, Scott's fast background in finance provided him the opportunity to live abroad in Dubai, of all places, and experience all working right. with diverse world cultures. He's an, Scott's, Scott's an active leader in the community, currently serves as commissioner for the San Ramon, City of San Ramon's Park and Community Services Commission. He also serves on the San Ramon Valley Educational Foundation Board of Directors and SRV USD's Parcel Tax Oversight Committee. Scott's passion for education and serving the community inspired his 2020 candidacy for the SRV USD Board of Education Trustee, Area 3, basically Doherty Valley. He is committed to improving the equitable education, promoting diversity, inclusion, and returning students to school safely. Scott enjoys playing ice hockey, playing chess, and writing music. And I will say my wife has uh, gotten to know Scott through the Leadership San Ramon program. And right. that's where I met Scott uh, initially. Had a great vibe. Liz had a great experience in the Leadership San Ramon program with Scott. And we welcome you, Scott. Thank you for taking the time Thanks. to come on to the show. I appreciate the, the opportunity to be on here tonight. Um, I, I really do. Thank, thanks, guys, for, for having me. Absolutely. So can I get into, uh, as a hockey fan, uh, were you excited for who won the Stanley Cup? You know, <laughs> I'll have to be honest. Um, I wasn't surprised that, you know, that, that they won. Um, what was it? Um, the, the Lightning, right? Yes. Um, they've been a good team uh, for the last several years now. And, you know, I, I kind of felt like they were going to they were going to get they were going to get there at, at, at one point. Um, they've just been a, a fantastic team. Um, but, you know, I'm just I'm just sad about, you know, our Sharks. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and so once once they were out, I kind of felt I wasn't really paying much attention anymore. <laughs> um, I had to ask. Right. Yeah, no, no. Good, quite good question. And then actually once the pandemic hit, I haven't been playing myself. So it's, okay. it's been kind of a bummer lately with that. We had a Dodgers fan that wasn't paying attention to the shark. Okay. never mind. <laughs> well, Hey Scott, since, uh, you know, we appreciate your time. And after that intro, why don't we get right into uh, a little bit more about what you you know, what you're about, what your intentions are, why you're inspired to run for this position and some of the things you hope to accomplish. And then we'll kind of have some questions between the guys. Sure. So this all really started, um, you know, this was sort of the, earlier in the year. Um, I attended a function here in San Ramon. Uh, a friend of mine was getting a, an award for, for woman of the year. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was uh, I was having a conversation with our current incumbent for the for the Board of Education. His name's Mark Jewett. He's a, he's a trustee mm -hmm. in uh, Area Three. Okay, and and so he pulled me aside and basically said, Scott, you know, there's a chance that I may not run. Um, you know, I've got I've got some things uh, going on um, that uh, you know uh, some good things in his life that uh, he wanted to you know possibly pa pass the torch kind of a thing. And he said that I just really can't think of anyone else, uh, you know, any other community member that has the dedication that you have and, and the passion that you have for this district. Um, he, we've got, we've got to know each other on several boards. And he said, you know, if, if I don't run, I, I really would hope that you would be interested in this. And so, you know, I took a, a long, hard thought about that. Um, 
you know, it was something that I, I, I truly did, you know, think about. And, you know, initially I was flattered, but then I thought, you know what? Um, I, I felt kind of obligated. I felt like, you know, this is, this is the time to do it. Um, you know, we're going through this crisis and, uh, based on all the experience that I've had, uh, here within, within our community, within the school, within the school district, it was, it was time to step up and, 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 uh, help us get through these uh, tough times. So, um, that's kind of where it started. Um, and, uh, so then I launched my campaign, um, on, on, uh, a couple, a couple issues here. So again, going back to what I was saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, my, I've been, I've been serving for several years now on the, right. uh, uh, board of directors for the San Ramon Valley Education Foundation, um, as well as the district's parcel tax oversight committee. And that oversight committee really is, is a group that provides this oversight and transparency on district expenditures, right? Okay. So, um, so it's, 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 it's been a, a great board to be on to learn a lot about, um, about the district. Um, but you, you guys were talking about sort of my, 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 you know, my, my platform, right. And my mm -hmm. initiatives. And so, um, I've got, I've got several. Um, you know, being a part of the district, I think that's given me so, an opportunity to understand some of the key issues that we're, we're facing uh, within the school district. One of them is obviously we're in this, we're in this crisis, right? We're in a pandemic, right? And, and there's, there's just, there's this, um, a lot of controversy around whether or not kids should be back in school or they should be at home, you know, doing right. the distance learning, right? I'm sure you guys have, have been hearing all about that. Um, you know, personally, uh, I, I want to, I want to get kids back in the classroom as safely as possible. Um, so, so that's, that's something that's really important to me. And I'll tell you why, um, is because, you know, that's, we know, uh, without a, without a doubt that, you know, being in the classroom is, is the best education that our kids can possibly have, right. um, and that, that we can provide. Right. And so. Uh, as long as we can do it safely, as long as we can we can consider all the things that are, are you know that are really important, like keeping kids safe, keeping teachers safe, um, looking at all the things that we need to do, like testing infrastructure, um, making sure that we have proper ventilation, all, all the mm -hmm. social distancing required. Um, but I think it could happen, and, and we're get, we're getting there. Actually, we're getting there uh, in a in a uh, sort of a hybrid situation soon. Um, but really, you know, I, I was hoping that we could get our uh, sort of our, our uh, special needs kids into mm -hmm. the classroom as soon as possible. I know that we're working on that um, and, and also our youngsters, right? Because I think every day that goes by, every day that goes by that, uh, that we're not in that classroom uh, is, is kind of like a day that they're, they're losing, uh, you know, in, in their educational uh, lifetime. So they don't get those back, right? They, they, don't, they don't get those days back, right? So. It's, it's really important. Other things that I'm working on, uh, you, know, it, you know, for those kids that decide, hey, uh, we're, 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 you know, the families that decide we're not gonna go back to the classroom, we, we do need to make sure that the, the remote learning situation is as equitable and uh, efficient as possible. So we need, to, we need to continue working on that, making sure that uh, um, teachers are, are given all the resources they need, that the students given all the resources they need, and that we're not forgetting about that, that group of students. Um, another thing that we're, we're facing in our district right now uh, is, is a serious uh, uh, mental health crisis. Um, I think that, you know, in terms of talking to a lot of parents and a lot of students and even teachers, um, one of the biggest things that I hear is that there's, you know, our district is, is, you know, we do really well, right? Our test scores show that, you know, our kids are very smart. We have some of the smartest kids in the country uh, at our, at our, in our district. Um, but what comes with that is a lot of stress, a lot of yeah. uh, competition. It's highly competitive in our, in our, in our district. So, um, so we do need to work on that mental health situation, uh, mental wellness for our students. Mm -hmm. um, big, a big, big uh, platform of mine, something, a big initiative that I want to work on. Uh, and again, you know, I, I do think that the, the district has responded um, in a pretty good way, um, in, in, uh, in a number of ways, I, you know, I think we've come up with these, they're called PLIs, they're called, uh, they're, uh, personal learning initiatives essentially. Um, and you know, this gives students a lot of flexibility, 
in their day. Um, it kind of allows them to create this, uh, create their own schedule, right? Create, uh, create some flexibility. So those that want to go out and do a, more than what they need to do, they can do it. Uh, but for those that want to sort of um, have a little bit more of a relaxed schedule um, in their day, they can do that too. So it, it creates this, this, this flexibility and that in turn is supposed to help reduce a little bit of the stress that, that, that the key, these kids are facing. Um, and then of course, um, you know, we, we did respond, the district did respond with a, uh, a mental health task force, um, that has these several initiatives actually. Um, a couple of them are, are, are big, a big deal in my opinion. Um, they have, uh, basically two mental health facilities, uh, that they're, that they've piloted at two of the high schools, one at Cal high and one at Doherty Valley. Mm -hmm. They're going to come up with two more at the other two high schools, which which are I think which is fantastic. Um, and then they've also hired two uh, full time social workers for, for for students. And so I think that this, so you know, the district is showing that they're they're trying to 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 respond to these mental health issues with kids. Um, but you know, the 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 questions that I'm getting from from the community are you know well you know a lot of these initiatives were were created pre COVID. Right. And even even when kids were in school pre COVID, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really have a lot of the data that told us uh, how well that these initiatives were working. Right. We didn't we didn't really understand. In fact, some of the some of the parents and teachers were telling me that um, with with like the Sandy Hook uh, initiative from one school to the next, we weren't really sure how well it was was uh, was responding. Right. We didn't know how well it was working. Um, and when we actually go back to school, after, you know, post COVID, um, we're not sure how, how well it's going to work out. So what I was thinking is that since we don't have a lot of the data, we're not, it doesn't seem like we're, we're, uh, understanding how, how effective these initiatives are. Um, I was thinking that we, we could put together a, you know, a, a, an oversight committee for mental health, right. In our, in our district that would allow, um, us, you know, basically I've talked to a lot of, uh, local, uh, professionals in medicine who agreed to say, hey, I would love to get together, meet on a regular basis and provide some oversight to these initiatives, right, to this mental health task force. We'll come together, provide some oversight and make sure that we're on track, right? So, so I think that this is something that we can do to, to, to keep moving in the right direction. Um, but I do think that we need some oversight around that because we just don't know how well, how well we are tackling this mental health uh, issue sure. for our kids. Um, uh, some other, some other, uh, some other things that I, I'd like to do is is improve equitable education, and how I would do this is sort of by pooling resources from public and private sectors. So, um, as a as a San Ramon commissioner right now, um, I think that gives me the needed experience to work closely uh, with city officials, like I currently do. Um, and really bridge the gap um, through active involvement with our school district, local government, and corporations. So, um, so I think that that's something that I really want to work on. And then, of course, many other uh, important uh, issues to me is is to continue to promote diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion within the district. Um, of course, you know there's there's all kinds of uh, issues that we're seeing across the country with with with, with racism and, and 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 so I think we we need to address that um, and and be a little bit more proactive around those issues. Um, I'd like to continue to support, hire, and retain the best teachers. Um, some of my best experiences, some of my best memories of going through um, our school district here in San Ramon. Um, was my they, they were my teachers right uh, you know uh, and and I just want to make sure that you know we have teachers that can really uh, provide the best education for for our kids um, and so the, I think that those are the main so the main sort of the main things that I'm working on and then of course you know the one of the biggest things is is to provide that take take my financial background and my financial expertise and come in and and really help to to sort of uh, maintain and, and manage our our you know our budget essentially right which is which is primarily one of the biggest the, the biggest jobs that I think that a school board has to do right is to manage that budget so um, so those are those are my my main my main uh, tasks uh, you know that that I'm 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 working on currently. Um, 
And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback from, from parents. I've been calling, you know, I've been talking to a lot of parents and, and students, teachers, hundreds, hundreds uh, throughout this campaign. And it's been a fantastic learning experience for me. Um, you know, at the end of the day, even if I didn't win this, this election, it's going to certainly make me a much more knowledgeable, <laughs> uh, you know, community member, a much more knowledgeable uh, board member to the Education Foundation um, and the Parcel Tax Oversight Committee. So it's just been it's been it's been a rewarding experience so far. Great. That's a lot of good information there. And I think uh, you hit on a couple of things. We'll get into some questions here from the guys. Uh, I would just like to comment on the mental health side of thing, uh, things. I think that's a, a, a great initiative with COVID, especially I, I know firsthand it, the, the anxiety and, and uncertainty that a lot of the kids feel, especially in the high school level is really, it, it's real. And yeah, they don't know how to, they don't know where to go, who to talk to, how to reach out to. And, you know, it's something it's actually this week is mental health awareness week. And, uh, it's something that can be detrimental. Like they don't, you know, they, they think uh, of these stigmas and I, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here, but uh, that's, I'm really gr glad that you're looking at dealing with that. So. Yeah, I, it, it really is one of my top priorities and I just get it. I, I love, you know, uh, I, so I've connected, I literally have connected with, um, I put feelers out through social media and I, and I, and I come across, you know, uh, like, a, like doctors, like a psychologist on, on that I read about on Facebook and I, and I send them a message and say, Hey, look, you know, are, are, do you live in, in this area? Do you have kids in the district? And, and we'll connect. And I'll say, Hey, look, I'm work, I'm working on this, this initiative, this mental health uh, wellness initiative. And we get in these long conversations and, and so far the handfuls of, of these professionals that I'm talking to all agree that there, a, there is a problem, right? B, many of them aren't really, don't understand what we're doing to solve those problems, even though we are. I, I do I believe that our district is responding to these issues, and, and we are. Um, and so I, I let them know, I tell them what's going on and what, what sort of these initiatives that we're doing to, to, to sort of solve these problems. But they've all agreed that, you know, we don't, we're not getting enough data from, from these initiatives. We, we need to be able to look at the data to tell us how well we're doing in solving this problem. Right. We can't. It's hard to make decisions without without the data. Right. And so even though we have some great initiatives going on, we need to we need to we need to do a better job in collecting the data. And of course, some of these initiatives are new, of course. Right. So we, we there's not a lot of data there yet, but um, there's still a lot of feedback. So that we can get we can gather from from students, parents, teachers uh, to help us understand how to improve what we're doing. So um, but yeah, it, it's definitely an important topic for me. Well, and you mentioned, you know, you, you've spoken with, you know, a lot of people and, you know, you know, I agree with you. I think that every day that goes by, you know, in many cases, the kids, you know, can't get those back. Right. Do you, find, right. Do you find that other, the majority of people want their kids back in school and either full-time or hybrid? I'll, I'll tell you, um, it, it kind of depends where you live <laughs> um and I'll, and I'll tell you so the you know in 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 a lot of the fam for a lot of the families that i talk to um that are out in district three which is the majority of, of doherty valley right you have a lot of multi-generational families there where you have the uh you know the, the the student you have the parents and then you have the grandparents all living in one home right uh and so in that family dynamic, you have uh, the parents who are working in the day, but then you have the grandparents who are able to sort of watch over their kids doing their, their, their um, remote learning throughout the day. And so, so that might work for them, right? And there, were, there is a lot of fear. I, I, you know, I talked to a lot of those families out there who, you know, who sort of um, have a lot of fear around, around COVID and uh, mainly due to the fact that they don't want their kids to come back home and, and give it to their grand the grandparents right who are more who are more vulnerable to this to this disease so uh so you have that in fact i was just talking to a kid uh, a student the other night who was saying that he would love to be actually he would love to be back in the classroom he he misses his friends he he, he would love to be in the classroom but he lives with his grandparents 
Um, and, you know, he just couldn't bear, bear the idea of his, of his, you know, losing his grandparents to something that he brought home. Right. And so, so you do see that. Um, but I would tell you, though, that the majority of the people that I talk to and even teachers, even teachers that I've talked to want to get back into that classroom. And so, you know, I, and I truly believe that being in that classroom is, is, the, is the best way we can educate our kids. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, obviously, we have to we have to do it safely. Yeah. And we also have to give that 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 option for those who who won't go back to, to, to class. We have to give them that option. But I think that um, the majority of those families do want to get back in that classroom. And I think it's important that we, we, we uh, prepare as much as possible and get, and get going, you know, on that. So, cause, mm -hmm. cause it, it's coming, right. We're, we're, we're getting there. Right. So I have a question. How do you address, and you know, this is going to have lasting effects like for the States that are already doing in person and then, you know, our kids are home. Right. So when it gets, to later in their high, you know, when they get to high school and they're trying to apply for colleges, do you feel like the kids are like right now, my son's a senior and I've got a, a freshman in high school. Do you feel like if they don't get to class then they're going to fall behind these other schools or these well, other kids? Uh, I, you know, I mean, if we were doing this, you know, uh, if this were going to happen for years and years, you know, I, 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 I might be a little bit more concerned about that, especially mm -hmm. if we didn't, do anything to improve uh, our our situation at home, right? In terms of our, our, yeah. our, our uh, remote learning, um, but you know, I I don't think there's one school district in this country that were that that were you know that 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 knew that this was coming and had a plan for for COVID, um, and so I don't think there's one district that responded well to to, to COVID nineteen, right? To this pandemic and. Um, but on the flip side to that, I think that, you know, our district, um, uh, one, once we figured it out, <laughs> once we figured it yeah. out, that, that next school year that started, right, I think that that uh, we, we did, we did ha have things going uh, in, in the right direction. And you can mm -hmm. definitely tell with the feedback that you hear from, from parents and students that it was like night and day, right, that we, 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 we got it figured out. Um, and and, you know, so I, I don't think that, and of course, if, if in certain situations, especially like for our special needs kids and our young kids, um, I, I'm more concerned about them because the, like I said, the, the, the more they're not in the classroom, uh, getting that extra attention from their teachers, yes, the more they're going to fall behind. So those younger kids and those kids with special needs, absolutely, I, I, would, I would be more concerned about them in a longer, sort of in a longer situation. Uh, which is why I think we we really have to get them into the classroom right away. Um, but for our you know our older students, um, you know I think they're pretty resilient. Um, I've talked to many that you know that you know either you know they're they're doing okay um, with remote learning. So um, some of them are actually um, enjoying it to be honest. Yeah. Um, you now they they are missing that that interaction with their with their friends of obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they want to get back to that. And, and, you know, part of the problem here is that the kids, you know, are, are missing that social, emotional, you know, they're, they're, they're missing that interaction with, yeah. with their friends. That part, of, part of going through school, part of uh, some of the skills that we learn are those social skills. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if we're not getting those early on, you know, what does that, what does that mean, right, down the road? Uh, so, you know, it, it's not just all about, you know, the, the, the curriculum and, and, and what we're getting in our, in our books and our studies. It's yeah. how do we interact with other people? Sure. Um, and if we're not doing that, we're, we're missing out on a whole piece, a whole very important piece of our development. Right. So, so, yeah. um, so that's a, that's a big, that's a big deal. Um, uh, and again, it's just it's another reason why we have to we have to do what we can to figure out how to get to get back in the classroom. So, great. Hey, Brett. I have a question. Uh, Brett, can yeah. you guys hear me? Yeah, let's. Uh, Brett, yeah. you can ask like a final question. We'll wrap it up uh, just in 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 sense of time and everything. But, I, I was uh, go just ahead. curious in in the sense of uh, our development going forward and such, and uh, what you thought about. Van Halen and Eddie Van Halen uh, <laughs> going away today. 
his favorite song is it eruption or is it or you know what what is your favorite you know you really tell you're hurt by eddie i'll, but, I'll tell you um, why i'm destroyed I, 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 I this is this has really killed off 2020 for me i gotta admit I, so i'll tell you what i was walking i don't know i probably walked 450 homes I hope my boss isn't, you know, listening to this conversation, but uh, I walked about 450 homes today, passing out flyers. And when I read that news this morning, I dedicated my walk to listening to Van Halen all day, pretty much. Um, and what, what I was mostly listening to, I think, because I have on my Pandora, it's the, the 1984 album. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, I mean, I, how do you not, how, how is that not anyone's favorite all time album. That, it, it's mine. Yeah. It's no, mine. it's one of the tops. Yeah, and I tough, can't think of a song tough. on there that I couldn't listen to five times in a row. Like, <laughs> it's just. Except um, Matt's because he was three. <laughs> 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 but, well, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and yeah, I'm very sad about that too. I was actually shocked. I didn't even know that he, that he had cancer. Yeah. It was a surprise. Um, he he had yeah, actually he yeah he so. he had cancer for quite a while. He'd been dealing with throat cancer and back and forth, and it I, you know apparently it spread. And, and it sounded like he, he's had it. It sounded like he had it for a long time. Yeah so, yeah, uh, he was a big big smoker, big smoker. Right right right. Well, I'll tell you, he he certainly had a, 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 you know an amazing amazing life. Yeah. Um, and right, he's I think yep. listed as one of the one of the best uh, guitar players ever. So. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, he's, he's just amazing. Oh. Okay, well, we'll thank you, that. Scott, for joining the Neighborhood Watch. We really appreciate it. And good luck to you uh, in the election. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Again. Scott, thanks for coming on. Love yeah, to have you. Appreciate it. Best of luck. Tonight.